Hey guys, Edmund Wilt here from Ruby Nation, and this is the Ruby Nation Podcast, Volume 4, Chapter 9, Two Steps Forward, Two Steps Back. And today I am joined by Edmund Cinder. Hey guys, how's it going? Edmund Pira. Hi. And Mercury. I'm dying over here. <laughs> well guys, we uh, we got a bit of an interesting ep- episode this week. We got to see all four of the main girls this week. Um, and we immediately open up with Yang and Tai having a little bit of a training session. Um, but before we get into the episode itself, I want to get everyone's introduction thoughts on the episode as a whole, what they thought of it, um, if anything really stood out to you, things like that. And for that, I'm going to start with Mercury on this one. Oh, yay. Um, I was glad that they finally incorporated an episode where all four characters were shown even if they didn't have like a lot going on between certain ones but it was a heart puller for sure right and pure my emotions were all over the place but i think the the thing that that saved me the most was why is best howl boy <laughs> and cinder i mean I, I love seeing all the characters again like all the main ones uh, Whit is it Whit Whitley? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still, he's the, he's got even worse. Oh, damn it! His name is. <laughs> what? Yeah, the last podcast that that Mark was on, <laughs> there there was sort of a unanimous decision that his name is no longer Whitley. It's Whitley. I agree. Um, which is sort of why the last podcast that Merc was in, there was an abundance of Nevermores. And not to mention the, um, Balls or Bust picture. Oh. oh, yeah, that, that was also in there as well. But going right into the episode itself, we, we open up with, like I said, Yang and Ty are having a bit of a training session. Yang is getting used to her new arm, and Ty is trying to not only help her fighting wise but also see if she's ready mentally and we get to see this uh, play out a little bit when he says that she's a little bit off balance and what he means by that is she may not be in the right mindset just yet to to be able to go out on her own again and she is making great strides but we got to see a, this was sort of the first little I guess miniature fight that we got for this episode and it was very interesting to see because we got to see a little bit more of Ty's fighting style which is a a melee fighter like a lot of us had I guess thought about but I want to get your thoughts on like where Yang is as a character and how long do you think it's going to take for her to fully recover from this I'm thinking the next episode (laughs) We actually see her in it'll probably be she'd be back to normal hopefully well okay. i don't want to say she'll be normal. back to normal by no, like lo- losing losing i can imagine that losing an appendage of any kind whether it be your your legs or your arms or even a, just a finger you're never fully normal again you just kind of learn to adjust and that takes a lot of time not to mention but I, think, being a- I think she'll be i think she'll be back to more stable by at least the end of the season. Okay. I also like the fact that she she's not relying on her, her arms so much anymore. She before she, you know, she could land a good kick if she needed to, but she didn't really use her feet a whole lot. And you, she blew that out of the water this episode. That's a good point. I'm glad she's being shaken out of the old mindset she used to have because she was pretty like cocky in the in the battlefield, and then once everything fell apart and Ty basically like hit home every point that was wrong, she didn't just like deny it. She just took it and then moved on with it and used it, which is really good. That's because Yang is awesome. <laughs> she's definitely getting better at fighting as well because. She always struggled a bit against people that Kickers, yeah. like kick and punch at the same time, like Mercury. 
he that, did say. That's a good did point. And did. one, the the big thing that got brought up by Ty was like she was relying on her semblance too much, and and so maybe this is going to be a sort of a step when we start to see maybe that that doesn't happen as often. I think also the reason why she was so accepting of the advice was how Ty compared her to Raven. Like she's he said they were both stubborn and like that could pause like some people who are stubborn they may refuse to adapt when given new criticisms or something like that. Mm-hmm. She may be inclined to not be like her. And then that's why she immediately like clicked with the new advice and beat Ty. Because she wanted to distance herself from maybe being like her mother. Well, we definitely know that Raven's not someone she's incredibly proud of. She there's there's a lot of mixed emotions towards her mom when it comes to Yang. That's very true. Kind of being abandoned. Yeah. And and we got to see sort of both sides of of Yang's current state and and how I guess Tai is handling all of that. And he seems to be a a lot more level-headed now than he probably used to be, but with in terms of of Raven, Yang is is still a little bit I guess shooken up about about her mom, but whereas Tai seems like he he has accepted things a little bit more now, and he may not have been that way uh, before, but now he he definitely seems like he's he's ready to accept the fact of about Raven, and he's trying to show that to Yang, and I feel like that's going to be a major point for her to to sort of get past this next sort of block that she has mentally. But during the fight, we also got to see um, Volume 4's version of Zwei. And the cute ah! little bugger that he is. <laughs> he is best hey, we'll boy. Of, we'll sort of already seen him a little bit, but he wasn't really walking, was he? he no, was he awesome. was sort of just a, a mound a in a bed. <laughs> yeah, blob. A mound. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of the right word, but Blob's a little That's bit better. Best <laughs> but but it was great to see him again, and there there's a lot of mixed opinions about his look in the comments that I saw, but the, for the majority of them, they seem positive, and he's still the the adorable little corgi that everyone always remembers him as. He's still his feet are still the same, like just I oh. I. They're weird looking, but that's what makes Zwei awesome. I mean, does he still have an X on his butt? I don't know. We didn't get to see it. I think people probably seem to forget this, but it has been about how long? Six, six, uh, six like, to eight, eight months. months. Yeah, because Zwei definitely would have got bigger anyway. Well, I mean, we did get to see Chibi Zwei, which you can't get more adorable than Chibi Zwei. Uh, that is true. But as far as like his involvement and everything, he uh like like Pierce said, he he was basically playing towel boy. And and that was that was great. But I mean, as far as that, there's not a whole lot else to talk about other than Zwei is awesome, he's adorable, and he's still he's still supreme overlord of everything, I guess. Always just he's not always to me. Zwei. Fly it again. <laughs> yeah, my overlord. No, that's uh, life. If 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 they if they kill off Zwei, there'd be a lot of death threats to Rooster Teeth. Oh god, I don't think um, I don't think they could physically do that th- to themselves. They love Zwei too much themselves. They're gonna scalp his. They're gonna have a villain scalp his butt. No. A villain scalp his butt. That's what Hazel's doing. I feel like again. if anything. <laughs> I, I, Zwei is what just, he's, he is there. <laughs> Wear him as a hat? What the hell is wrong with you, lady? I am more twisted than you guys give me credit for. Yeah, I know, I've heard. <laughs> Shut up, you! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but, going back into, I guess, the later parts of the, the fight between... Yang and Tai. Well, it's not really a fight. It's more just straight up training. It's sparring. Yeah, it's sparring. There, that's the right word for it. But uh, yeah. they, they sort of just go. And Tai is is trying to keep her not only 
balanced in her fighting sense, but balanced emotionally and everything else. And Yang is definitely made a lot of progress in that regard. And she, she is dealing out everything that she is being taken from Tai to the point where it's like she gets the upper hand and is able to knock him over. And that was an interesting point for me because it was just like she, like Pierre said, uh, is using not just her fist anymore and she's using more of a, like, tactician fighting style rather than just a brawler it's sense. More, it, it, she, she's gone from just boxing to kickboxing. Yeah. And I, thinking about that, I, I wanted to know if you guys were thinking that maybe we could start to see like when eventually her weapons do return because I mean they they are going to have to return in some sense she is not even though she's going to be powerful with her fists like that that's not going to be able to protect her against the creatures of Grimm and everything else so now that she's starting to learn this <coughs> more involved fighting style do you think her weapons are going to change because of this? No! I mean, I hope not. Is my life. If anything, they may be, they may extend it so it's more like a hole. Instead of just like the, the hand it's... and like a little bit of the wrist to maybe like include more protection for the rest of the arm. Okay. That's the only thing I could think of because it may so make my... more sense for her. Now... Iron blades like all metal um, with his gun. Like well, see, or... thinking about that... I that is the other question I wanted to bring up. Do you think the metal arm will just wear the original Ember Celica, or do you think it will have a modified specific to the arm itself? I mean, everyone else the is not right. Ember Celica. I mean, the arm, technically speaking, if she can get to Atlas, it could be integrated. I mean, I personally, I'd be fine with like a full on just like mecha arm like something something just super cool swiss that army arm. yeah swiss <laughs> army arm <laughs> the thing is that would Atlas have considered that at the time of reconstructing it cuz i think at the time iron was just concerned with getting her an arm yeah and okay, like that that's why i'm not really expecting it cuz that that is definitely the the main purpose of it it would just sort of be cool to see it weaponized because I guess I'm just so used to watching like Iron Man and everything else. I just I want to see it be something cool. I don't know. I mean, everything's a gun, so yeah, uh, basically. <laughs> and the it's weapons really in the show, like I don't think I've ever liked weapons in a show more than I have Ruby. So it would just be cool to see. I think my favorite part of the weapons of Ruby is building them. I, I still want to get be able to start getting into that, but it's tricky at the moment because I, I am saving up for a 3D printer to be able to start doing cosplay stuff, and so that that will help a lot at that point, and cosplay is one thing that, that Ruby has been growing in exponentially um, recently, and it's it's great to see that. It's sad. You have to build yourself. <laughs> I mean, you could just pay someone to make it for you because I, I have to put the art I, style of It won't be the sandwich. same. He won't be the same Wilk as before. He'll return changed to <laughs> some degree and he'll never be the same waifu shredder that we once knew and loved. Cosplaying is something that I really want to get into. It's just a matter of one, I it's don't think I could time ever. It's consuming and expensive. Well, yeah. the time-consuming part I could work with. The expensive part is the the other side of that. Well, Whereas... the thing about cosplay is I've been cosplaying for the better part of ten years, and it can be really expensive. But it, it's all about buying your materials on sale, being smart about your materials, and bargain hunting. Like yeah. a lot of my materials are repurposed from thrift stores. And, and that's sort of where it's like, I I do know a few people who uh, do sort of outsource a lot of things, whereas I'm one of those people that sort of just has to make everything myself. As someone who, like, grew up in, 
Well, like, I grew up in woodworking, uh, RC car making, and then eventually went on to metalworking, and now I, I work in a machine shop a lot. I know how to use, like, CNC machines, 3D printers, I do a lot of CAD stuff, and then I, I've just always been around building things and making things, and so I want to bring that into the cosplay side of things eventually. It's just a matter of getting the income, and so to do that kind of thing, but once I do that, it it's definitely going to be a step in the right direction for, for me, at least, but... Going back to to the episode, we, we begin to see the sort of next, <laughs> I guess, section of the episode, and we go into Weiss's story, and it was a bit brief, but we did get to find out something that all of us was expecting, and personally, it wasn't... I wasn't expecting so soon, but she finally... <laughs> it was definitely fulfilling, but we finally get to see her in, I guess, this, like, she has been practicing with her summoning, and starting off, we see her begin to try and summon the sword again from the night that she fought in the trailer, and once again, little, uh, she has a a bit of an interruption by (laughs) Holly, and and that was very interesting. Um, She basically handled it like... She probably should have, to be fair. She went back to original Weiss mode. Yeah. Do you know what, you know what I've noticed about Weiss and her summoning, though? I don't know if it's just me, but she only seems to summon when she's angry. Like, um, when she first fought, well, when she first did it with Velvet, Velvet got attacked, so she was, like, running a bit angry and cut the thing off. Well, and, uh, I think she's with, more with the, um, Grimm the other day, as, the other week as well. Yeah, that one was definitely classed by anger, but Velvet, I think it was... Yeah, yeah, it's still considered anger, because, like... Well, we did learn back when she was uh, training with... Or not training, but discussing it with Winter back in Volume 3. They Her summoning itself is tied with her emotions. And she has to be in control of her emotions to be able to, to summon properly, which is why she's not been very good at it previously. And... Like, we... I don't think it was because she was necessarily angry, but because she was controlling that that emotion specifically, which is why she was able to successfully summon. And, like, Whitley being there sort of just distracted her more than, I guess, did anything, and that's why it sort of cut out there at the start. But she went immediately from being angry at him to be able to fully summon this thing, and so she's definitely got her, her emotions on a lot more uh stable grips yeah stable grip and and that's really good to see and i'm curious how that is going to play into her story down the road like she's going to be become a much more refined character in that sense that she's just becoming a less posh version of winter that that's a good point and Bringing up Winter is is interesting because she, I feel like she's gonna have to have some kind of role to play in all this, and we got to hear Weiss mention after she summoned the the full suit of armor, which it's sort of like a miniaturized version, which is still sort of cool, but uh, after that happened, like she caused a bit of a disturbance, and Klein comes rushing in. But she asked Klein for a favor, and I want to know what you all think that favor is going to be. Get me the hell out of here. Basically. Pretty much. So you think it's going to be, like, just immediately direct to that? You don't think it's it's going to be like, I need you to it, it might maybe go get Ironwood or go get Winter or something like that? But by doing that, it's still helping her get the hell out of there. Well, yes, but... It could just be to make Indirectly her cake. Indirectly or directly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to correlate to her escape. Okay. There's something else that I don't think we've touched on that I noticed is um, Weiss asked Whitley if he's jealous of her and Winter's capabilities, which leads me to believe that he doesn't have the same... Like, he, he can't tap into the... Maybe he hasn't had his or I, 
Yeah, I feel like that may be an R thing, is what I saw a lot in the comments, of how he just has never trained, he never went to any kind of of a warrior school or anything else like that. And so he may have the abilities, but he is just not unlocked them or has any ability thinks, to use them. He thinks it's beneath him. Yeah. As he said, it's like it's barbaric. And so maybe the same thing like as, um, same thing as Jock, maybe. But then again, he's a different family line, so that might explain why. I... It could just be that because he's male and come from Jock, maybe that could be it. But... Well, it, it, it's possible, but I mean, every... I don't think being, like, a a huntress or a huntsman is sort of, like, known at at birth. It's sort of something you, you train to be. And so I feel like any any character could aspire to be that. I mean, it. we don't really know a whole lot about a lot of the characters' parents, but, I mean, there there's only a few families that we know of that, that have come down from generations of of these warriors and so it it could be a hereditary thing but i feel like it's more along the lines of just those who have these abilities trained to use them and whitley just was not one of those people and the same with Jacques and and all of the the other i guess aristocratic people of atlas um that are not a part of the uh atlas military or anything else like that stupid yeah. high and mighty rich people yeah the high and mighty rich people the thank god people. we took a strip off them and what hmm? Hmm? white lace read them the riot act back in episode i think it was six it was yeah, six or seven six. it was yeah. six when she uh got mad yeah, because it was six, because that was also the same episode where we first saw Tyrion. Yep. Well, after well the first saw Tyrion fu- uh, against Ranger. Yeah. But a cool episode. To to finish off with with Weiss's section of the story, I want to know what you guys think are is going to happen the next time we see Weiss, because it it may be the next episode. We're coming up on, I assume, the final three episodes of the volume, so we may get yes. more. Of the, uh, like, all four girls and each one has their own section, or it could still be split up. It, it'd be a little surprising to see them still, I guess, like, only showing one or two groups at this point. Because we are approaching the end of the volume. It, it makes a lot more sense to to sort of get the climax for all characters at the same time. So, odds are we're going to see Weiss again here in the next episode. We may not, but... Most likely, it's going to happen. So, what do you guys think is going to happen the next time we see her? She'll probably be planning her escape, like to get away from Jock and Whitley and all the others. You can tell she wants to get out and help. She wants to do her part. Mm-hmm. I think she she might go back to Vale. I think, or well, any of that place. Over yeah, because. An, an interesting thought I had earlier about that is she doesn't really ha- does she have any way of knowing that that Ruby and and the rest of her team has sort of split ways now maybe that's what Klein is he wants her to he wants to Klein, she, yeah, she wants Klein to try to maybe figure out where they may have gone or at least track down one of them because we can track down Yang and she goes with her and they both try to find Ruby and or Blake. Okay. I... In the episode... Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. But in the next episode we see here, I see either she's talking with Ironwood and, like, wanting to get out of there, or she's just gonna full-out escape in the middle of the night or escape through force by, like, summoning the night again and just, like, making her father accept the fact that she's leaving can't do anything about it walk out and have the knight smash the stupid statue of the king taijidu because he is an arrogant ass for having a massive statue like that <laughs> he is cool though i, I want one of them <laughs> uh even though they're not real and that that uh that is an interesting point and i'm i'm curious to see once she gets out what she does do 
But we're going to probably have to wait for that. Odds are that'll be the big climactic end for Weiss in this volume. Um, it is her getting out. But going from Weiss's story, we are now on our way to Blake's. And we pick up right where we left off of her and son chasing down this mysterious figure um, who was spying on them as as they were out on the porch of her parents' house. And they are chasing her down, and we immediately get confirmation of something that a few of us had, had begun to, to think of in the last episode. And that was that this mysterious figure is a chameleon faunus. Yay! And, and we got confirmation of that as she she wasn't wearing sleeves or um, full pants or anything else like that. It was literally her skin. And, and that was a very interesting thing for me because it, it sort of was nice to sort of get that confirmation. But we get to see it unfold pretty quickly, um, almost right in the beginning of, of this chase. And we get to find out a little bit of backstory that Blake and this character, who we come to know as Ilya, and apparently these two have some history, and I'm I'm very interested to know what what that's about because there there's definitely some strong feelings between these two characters, but I I want to know what you guys think of of the character Ilya as a whole and what you think her I guess connection with Blake is all about. I think I that we all there was, the yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to think. I'm guessing there was a falling out between the two. Like, maybe Ilya wanted to go farther and, like, some drastic action with the White Fang. Blake disagreed, and then they split off having different ideas about how things should be going. Okay. Or, I kind of lean... I kinda or lean Adam Love kinda... Triangle that failed so horribly. Yeah, Ooh. that's what I was thinking. The, the other possibility with that is we've noticed that she she kind of changes color depicted by mood because when she was angry she went red. Green is normally a sign of jealousy or envy. I'm thinking that maybe she shared the same views as Blake but wasn't strong enough to leave. Uh, that That That's is... Possible. I mean, it. a lot of things are very possible at the moment as... As things a lot with this show are still up in the air about a lot of these these mysteries, but that that is a very interesting thought. And li like you said, she definitely changed her skin because of her her emotions and her mood. Um, and so I'm I'm curious if, like you said, with that green being jealousy or envy, maybe after what she did to Sun, which we'll talk about in just a minute, like she may have felt felt sorry but also still maybe jealous of Blake that that she was where she is now and she also <laughs> mentions Pardon before me. she runs off that like that Blake shouldn't have come back but something about that that was very interesting to me just that one phrase was that when Finnick and Corsac met with uh, Gira at the front steps of her house before they left and Blake had said she was still not done fighting they had mentioned that Sister Ilya would be elated to see her and oh. so it's I don't rem I didn't remember that me either <laughs> oh wow so this is actually a, a bit of a reminder for you guys but Sister the name Ilya wasn't the first time we had heard it in this episode um, Fennec and Corsac did mention her previously, and so that's sort of where it's like the big backstory happens. So she is a member of of the White Fang, uh, obviously because she was wearing the mask. But it it's interesting to note that her and Blake odds are have some sort of childhood connection. Um, they were both, I'm assuming, early members of the White Fang. Originally, I had thought maybe I Ilya was a mentor of some kind or something like that, but this she sort of... too young. Yeah, she she's definitely a bit too young for that. So th now that we know what she looks like and everything else like that, it makes me sort of rethink that 
she may be a very close childhood friend and so her being jealous of Blake for leaving and things like that makes a lot of sense or maybe not even jealous of Blake for leaving but maybe Ilya is still a a very involved member of the White Fang and she's mad at Blake for leaving or Adam Love Triangle gone wrong or Adam yeah. Love awesome. Triangle gone wrong what? Uh, I've I've got a little idea. What if um, Elia was was supposed to be the girl? Well, was supposed to be with Adam for the train robbery at the beginning, like in the trailer. And uh, Blake obviously was bare with him, so she didn't get it. That could be why she was jealous or em envious or something. I I try to make her to be the one who goes with him instead of her. In a way. Yeah. Hmm. That that's interesting to think about, and I I don't know if the whole um, Blake being in Vale was a a temporary thing, or like I I sort of assume that Blake and Adam were sort of just supposed to be in Vale as like the Vale branch of the White Fang, and so I don't know if Ilya was was there along with them or if she was more along the lines of a s menagerie specific member of the white fang um because corsac and fennec both seem to know Ilya, and they they sort of i guess represented the the menagerie branch even though they do know adam and are i guess working secretly with working with him but I'm curious to know more about Ilya's story, and especially her connection with Blake. But, like we had mentioned, she she did something to Sun, as Blake was a man managed to get the scroll away from her and was not going to give it back to her. She immediately got angry, she turned her skin red, and she struck Sun with her whip weapon. And it was right, like, looked to be a Left pretty... Left hand side dangerous spot um it, it did look more like it hit him in like the lower shoulder it somewhat yeah and i i've actually got an image here that that shows exactly where where he hit and it's like right above his his left peck and it it's definitely not like a direct heart shot but Wait, because sun it yeah it's definitely close enough to make us fear and be very concerned about Sun right now um, because when we leave off with Blake's story he's sort of just laying there in agony as Blake is trying to panicking. call for help and panicking but he sort of used it seemed that he he was drained of aura after using his semblance to hold Ilya down while Blake got his her scroll and that was why she was able to get such a direct hit on him. But uh, there also was a little bit of like a, a shock effect from the whip hitting him. So it, it may have been like an electric uh, whip since it, it did have that yellow glow to it. So we, it was very interesting to see that. But when, when we leave off with... The heart. No, definitely not. And so she she went for basically what was a I don't know if she was trying to to kill him or if she just did it and just to get away. Um, and any anything's possible at this moment. Like she is a member of the White Fang, whether or not she is a reluctant member or if she is a very active member of the White Fang. Um, ho we will get to see more of her because she is going to be the, Definitely. the I guess, catalyst. Now that we know that she has a backstory with Blake, she is probably going to keep Blake on check from now on until I guess Adam arrives, and she may end up just straight up working with Adam. <laughs> um, <coughs> but we leave. Sorry. You're fine. But we, we leave Blake's story with her, like we said, panicking over Sun, who is laying on the ground with this wound in his chest. And a lot of people 
are seeming to agree, at least from what I read, that they don't think Sun is is going to die, um, as he doesn't, I guess, wouldn't have a huge effect other than just being more detrimental to Blake, but it he... It would be worse if they killed him off now. Yeah, it. he doesn't seem like it would be a very necessary character to kill off, because it... On, at least, it would provide character development for Blake, but it wouldn't provide any plot development, which, if you're going to have a death, it you sort of need to have that. And like, so... Must have already done something to, like, hurt Blake already with um, yeah. dropping Yang's arm off right, which is right in front of her. And... There's more people she yeah. loves. <laughs> I mean, I... If it, if it happens, it happens. Um, I know a lot of people will be sad... Uh, especially a few key people that all of us know quite well. I wonder what if Sun all those Maybe. <laughs> Rip Sun's abs. Espe well, yeah, Coco as well. But, uh, yeah, Rip Sun's abs for sure if that were to happen. Oh, God. We'll never hear the end of that one. Uh, like horrible like, thought I just had. Like what if Sun dies and he literally, in his the cause of death is like a grim gets to him, and it's literally ripping his abs. Oh god! Oh, god. <laughs> and it's literally rip son's abs. <laughs> but but that's probably for another volume. But I I personally don't think uh, son is is going to die. He may have some uh, rough times, but I don't think he's gonna die anytime soon. Uh, he probably will have to be. Healed a bit. Um, so, so that'll be interesting to see where that goes. But going from, go ahead. I'm hoping some full members from Team Sun, like S S N appear. Uh, that'd be nice. Like, even if it's just Neptune, because Neptune appeared to be his best mate, and if he's injured, you might show up. Yeah, but you have to sail across an ocean. I guess, yeah. yeah. Plus, there's with the and CCT how... down. There's not really an easy way to communicate that with. Oh with yeah, them. I forgot about that as well. Like that. Hey, that's they're connected that... via soul. He'll know something's wrong. Maybe. He'll know the other junior detectives in trouble. So Carrie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but... Carrie would write himself in there eventually. Probably, and like I. That is, like, a minor thing that's sort of major to the overall plot is that it's, like, communication across the kingdoms and things like that is not very easy to do anymore. Like, the CCT is down, it has not been rebuilt, um, and so communication is still down across the kingdoms, and, like, that that can cause quite a, a bit of an issue for a lot of these characters, but going from... Blake's side of the story, we finally finish off with Team Ranger picking up where uh, we last saw them, and they are transporting a injured crow to hopefully the nearest town, and he, they have him on this, this stretcher, and Jean and Ruby are carrying him, and they, they come across this fork in the road, and oh, we get to, uh, learn a bit about well not really learn but sort of find out more about Ren and Nora's backstory and I'm curious what you all think happened in in the town that I guess Koro Yuri is, is what it was called yep and destruction death despair it does, it does seem that's my thing get your own thing I got that from Nora you can take it up with her But yeah. Topic must have happened with him. Maybe with Nora as well. That that's that's true, and I'm I'm curious to see if it if it was just something with with Rin specifically and Nora knows about it and that's why she is defending his decisions, or if this this was sort of a a mutual I guess, bad time in, in both of their lives. 
but uh, maybe Ren took it a lot harder than, than Nora did, um, just based on what we saw, because Ren was straight up, like, he, he is not going there, and, and Nora was, was defending that decision, and Jean is sort of against splitting up for very good reason, um, but this is something that, that is definitely disturbing Ren about that town, and odds are I, we'll, we'll talk about it towards the end, but there is a very good reason why that that is because there is a something that has been shown twice now in terms of Ren and Nor's backstory and so we we come to this point and I'm curious what you think is going to to happen with with Ren and Nora if Ruby and Jean sort of come across something that they can't really deal with I'm hoping and utterly praying that something happens to Ruby and John, or at least attempts to happen to Ruby and John. And this is where we finally see semblance. This is also where we see Forest Lancaster. Mm, no. <laughs> I think um. Mm -mm -mm. But uh, personally, I think if if something does happen to Ruby and John, do you? I think like Ren and Nora may have to sort of put aside their their grievances with this place and and be the the sort of heroes and, and come in and help but um going with the i guess jean and ruby are now on their way to kuro yuri and ren and nora said they were going to go th up through the mountains into mistral and hopefully be able to find help for them but with the i guess exit of jean and ruby on their way to kuro yuri we get to see a the same symbol that we saw back in in the town that was destroyed before um, uh, Piganbana, and that <coughs> pardon me that was the first time where where we saw Ren and Nora have this sort of look of of worry when they saw this symbol, and and we get to see it again, and we sort of learn that. That symbol may have something to do with Raven's tribe. Done. 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 Well, I quickly did a translation for the name of the city. And as noted before, it's keeping up in the theme of Japanese flara language. And translated separately into its own two phrases, Kuro and Yuri, it means Black Lily. And it corresponds to love as well as curse. So I'm a, this could possibly be involving Summer, I think. Maybe she pe died at this town or something like that. I, There's a possibility. Because it's a possibility, if it was, yeah. If it's ransacked by... like the, One of the World of Remnants makes mention that a lot of the time, once a place is taken over by bandits, Grimm descend upon it afterwards, and one of the hunter and huntresses biggest duties is to protect people from Grimm, there's a possibility that that's where Summer was overwhelmed and killed trying to protect the people that were left there. It's it's definitely uh, an interesting thought. Um, personally, right. I don't know... I feel like Summer wouldn't have been been killed by just standard Grimm, though. I feel like it, it would have had to have been something to do with Salem in in some sense, but that's just me. It, it's very possible that, no, that that could have happened. No, you're, I think, no, you're going with what Will's saying now that I'm thinking about it. Vale has its own, like, each kingdom has its own separate division of hunters and huntresses. Why would Vale have to send one specific huntress all the way out to Mistral to help handle a group of roving bandits and stuff like that they could have been have overwhelmed be and it, it could have been a case of it was a call for help it could have been during the war that it was on about no no the war think so that was 80 yeah, years the, before the war happened like, quite quite a while ago i'm not i'm not the look actually the law the law for it <laughs> it it's definitely a lot to think about and that that's why it's like for some people it it's very understandable for some people to just not think about certain things. Um, but as far as the, 
I guess this symbol, whether it's some people are saying it's like some kind of giant hoof for a grim, some are saying it could be like the super powerful uh, ally that the tribe has, some are saying it's just the symbol of the tribe itself. Um, but it, it, it definitely like has a, a connection grim. somewhere. I, I feel like if it was a massive grim, though, like we'd see more than just one sitting there and it'd be more obvious that it's giant footprints true and they wouldn't have stepped on it if it was just giant footprint but why would like, ah, let's just go this way but why would a clan make one small symbol at one location and one bigger one on some random pathway maybe because like that i mean the on the the road site the town was marked out because ren had mentioned that the town was destroyed years ago um, odds are by this this tribe, and so what it may be is that this this place, this Kuriuri, is now maybe the uh, headquarters for the tribe, and so it would make sense that they would put these symbols around to sort of, I guess, signal like, hey, this is our <laughs> territory. That would make sense, and then with Black Lily, that could possibly be Raven. And so I'm, where it's predominantly black. Yeah, and and like Rin definitely does is not does not want to go back to this town. Maybe he doesn't even know that that the tribe has taken it over. All he knows is like maybe that was where he grew up as a child, and that's where like everything was destroyed when the bandits attacked or whatever. But finishing off the episode, um, we did get to see them leaving, and I'm curious what is going to happen. When when we see Team Ranger again, again it's probably going to be in the next episode because it's it's very nerve wracking to to sort of find out what's going to happen with with all of this, and I I think we're it's about time that that we sort of close off this episode. So I want to get everyone's closing thoughts on on what they expect to see in the next episode from any of their any of the characters, all of them, um, what we. Now that we know a little bit more, if there's anything that's changed about what you think we're going to see before the the finale for the volume, um, and anything like that, and I'm going to start with Cinder on this one. Um, I'm 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 definitely expecting them to get to that new that other that new village in the next episode. So I'm tired. I just can't really say the name properly. And uh, Kuro Yuri. That's the one. Um, I think. They'll they'll probably like overall in the volume. I'm assuming there's gonna be either Blake and oh, for God's sake, son. No, the um chameleon lady. Ilya. <laughs> Ilya. They're probably gonna either fight together or the um, Blake's will get Ilya on her side, and then it'll be either her versus Ilya and Gira versus Adam or. Blake. Oh, I want to see that so bad. Blake versus Adam or Gira versus Sienna. Sienna Khan. They'd both be pretty cool. Okay. And Pira? I want to see more of Yang. I want to, I want to see her go after her sister. Because you can definitely tell that she is an incredibly protective older sibling. And I don't think that's going to change just because she's had a setback. Okay. And I want I want to see Weiss I want to see Weiss finally go toe to toe with her dad, where she doesn't back down in the end. For sure. I, I want to see her freaking wreck his sorry ass. <laughs> I hate him. I love too. You Stomp don't hate him. Pretty sure that that's a mutual feeling from just about everyone in in the fandom right now. Like I've I've always liked all four girls of of Team Ruby. Yang's always been my favorite, and and Weiss was always kind of like a background character to me. But as the season progresses, she's slowly like edging up on Yang. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why? <laughs> I I definitely feel similar to that. And uh, finish off with Mercury. Um, something is going to happen to Ruby and John in the next episode. Something. Either they encounter the bandits that destroyed everything, they find some massive grim, or they find something even worse waiting in Kuro Yuri. Um, this oh, is obviously. 
I don't think you'll be back so soon. Exactly. <laughs> now, um, holding that thought for just a sec, with them interacting with the bandits, you do sort of have to realize that if this is Raven's tribe, they do have Crow with them. Wait, wait, wait. I'll just That's that. true. Yeah. But, no worries. But with, with Crow being with them and being injured as he is, if this is Raven's tribe that they're on their way to, like... I, I don't think that they're going to have to deal with anything bad as far as fighting them unless Raven is not there and they don't know who it is and they have to fight off these bandits. Or, or they if recognize they, Crow. Yeah, they unless they recognize leaving. Crow. And then they get mad at him leaving. But with him also being family to Raven, I, I doubt that she would just... I would really hope... I really hope that she wouldn't just, like, turn him away and just let him die. Um, pardon me, having Remember, seen what she's done to her daughter. I know, Remember, she but... has a strong, only the strong survive mentality. Like, well, Crow is definitely a strong character. <laughs> um, but... I, I'm curious to see what, what is going to happen with that. Because if, if it is Raven's tribe, that is going to be a huge point for, for all of these characters, Raven included. And I, I'm curious to see what is going to happen. But go ahead and continue with your final thoughts, Mercury. All right. Um, obviously, this is Ren and Nora's excuse to have a honeymoon away in the mountains. <laughs> that or they encounter a really big, like, snow grim that can, like, hide like, blend in with the snow since they're going into the mountain ranges or face another rock golem on their own. With Weiss, she's gonna... Either she's gonna be escaping or is plotting her escape with help of Klein, maybe Ironwood, or maybe Winter, or maybe the mom might make an appearance for all we know. Um, Blake is gonna continue her struggles with Ilya and Adam may finally return. And Gera is still going to hate Sun, even though he tried to help her. And then, what, the one thing I want to know is if Adam is going to kill <coughs> Fennec and the other guy. Corsac. Corsac, yeah. To try to fight Yang, because in the intro scene, they appear on the same screen as Yang when she's falling into like her own pit of chaos. Are she going to send them to like kill her or something like that and if so do we get a fight between with yang and tai yang against the two of them that that is and an interesting that, thought that i had and that, that, that in, made in sparks the yang well. to start like going out trying to find the others and tai yang may have his own development and start fighting back or something yeah okay and, and those are all very interesting thoughts from everyone today. Um, but this has been a a very, I guess, uh, eventful podcast as well as an episode. Um, but this has been the Ruby Nation podcast, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have, make sure to leave us a like, as well as if you have any questions for us, leave it down in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the Ruby Nation YouTube channel. Uh, if you have not heard of us before, we are the Ruby Nation. We are a fan-run Ruby page on Facebook, and we post daily content um, of all types. So if you have not been over there, be sure to like us over there as well. But this has been Admin's Wilt with Admin Cinder. See you guys. Pira. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night. And Mercury. Excuse me, it's Sir not appearing in this series. <laughs> Got Merc, you have a job. Alright guys, well, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Bye.